Uh, my honor now is to introduce uh, uh, Kristen Lucas and Joe Mackay. And Kristen Lucas and Joe Mackay are two very influential American artists who are brought here by the Berkeley Center for New Media. Uh, Kristen Lucas teaches at the University of Texas, and uh, Joe Mackay teaches at uh, uh, SUNY New York. And uh, Kristen got her MFA from Stanford, and Joe got his MFA from UC Berkeley. So. Uh, uh, please welcome them as they are going so to take us one I notch higher in the scale from one nanometer to the scale of roughly one meter. And uh, here they are. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here in the Bay Area again, and we're very thankful to the sponsors um, for bringing us here and for Greg and Laura for organizing our visit. Um, we uh, are sort of responding some of the basic questions that were um, posed by the conference. Um, beginning with an idea of how do images define our understanding of our environment by allowing us to access the inaccessible and how do images define locations. Um, Joe and I have independent practices and we're here mainly to talk about one uh, collaborative project that we've been working on, um, which is a work in progress as well uh, called Tablet Tumblr, but we thought we'd first introduce um, our work, like one piece of each of our work, um, so I'm going to start here with um, referencing a piece that I made 17 years ago <laughs> in 1997, an analog video that was edited in camera called Host, and it was about being human in a particular cultural and technological moment. Um, I imagined the interior view of the space of a computer through performing both the user, um, the network, and um, Net system operator and the machine. So I was creating images because I had no images to sort of describe this space that was increasingly pervasive in my world, um, uh, the, the world of network technologies that um, aimed at efficiency, precision, and productivity, but also included feelings of distance, disorientation, mistrust, and isolation. Um, I was trying to create an, uh, a vision of um, an embodied machine that um, had impossible yet familiar views through imagery and storytelling. Okay. Um, and this is a, a one of a series of images that uh, I was taking actually while I was in uh, grad school here. Um, and these are uh, when Google Street View first, first started. They hadn't realized that they should brand their cars yet. And so this is actually an image of a Google Street View car. And it's been uh, it's collaged together by finding reflections of the car in store windows and then re-stitched back together, if that makes sense. Um, and so I would find these by virtually driving around the city uh, in Street View looking for the reflections of myself. And I would also find them by bicycling around the Bay Area and looking for storefronts that had reflections and writing down the address and then going back virtually and finding that space. Um, and I think both of us were interested in this virtual space, real space, um, creating real spaces that are make more sense than a virtual paradigm. And I think that feeds well into, uh, into the collaboration we're doing. OK, so um, tablet, Tumblr. Um, and uh, this is a, a piece that Joe and I could both talk about at length. There, we have two different ways of thinking about this piece. It's um, an object which is a four foot diameter um, wheel. And I'm gonna talk more about the, um, the formal aspects of it and different references that it has. But first, um, things that brought us to the project were the idea of um, a tablet as being an all-in-one um, that you could uh, both record media or put media on it and also experience media and that it was not tethered to one place and so it was it was mobile and battery powered and we were like what can we do with this thing this is a really interesting um, object and it has all these built-in sensors and Joe is uh, um, programming a lot more than I am I'm sort of amateur at it and uh, and then so we came up with this design of the tablet tumbler to play these things and to use as many of the features as we could of the tablet um, and, uh, and then we also created, so, so one mode of this is to play an app, and we have multiple um, of these tablet tumblers um, that each play a different type of app. And then another thing that we do is we record a multi-channel, six-channel um, video um, collecting uh, all of these different viewpoints and bringing that into a video installation. Um, uh, the tablet tumbler form is informed by a lot of different, um, a, little, a lot of different technological references. Um, 
particularly the wheel, the, and then uh, I was thinking about the cable drum um, that is used to lay cable across land and sea. I think I have an image of that coming up. Um, cyclical and cinematic references. I was teaching video installation when I, this idea came to me, and new media installation. And so I was thinking about um, uh, the zoetrope, the history of the film loop, um, and animated GIFs in our more contemporary network space, uh, as well as um, the computer routine and the loop of the computer routine. So I was thinking about all of these different kind of formal um, moving image history loops. Uh, and then um, at the same time, also thinking about the mapping that was happening with Google Street View car um, and using this as a mapping tool, thinking about uh, a reference to the Katamari ball, which is this um, Japanese game where you have this ball that you move through space that reminds you of the story of Sisyphus, um, where you push this ball forward and it collects and gathers. Oh, okay, great. And also an, a tumbling, uh, sort of an aging tumbleweed of technology. Look. There's the animated gift. <laughs> we had examples of all these things, so we'll just move through them. That's the Katamari ball. And this is I would say um, story. <laughs> I grabbed this picture last night, and if you want to have fun, do a Google image search for Sisyphus and then just decide when to stop scrolling. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I eventually I had to choose a screen grab of all the images. To, that's the only way I could stop. I was at it for about 15 minutes. Oh, right. From so where for this deadline, I'd probably still be in the that, hotel room. That's a beautiful image search right there. Right? Yeah. yeah. So we're sort of also compulsively interested and identified with these, the cyclical, you know, um, in our culture and also as artists ourselves. And so, um, yeah, so we were, and like one of the early ideas was, it will be interesting to do something like map one location onto another location or collect things through location. And we've been working on all different kinds of beta tests in order to explore what the possibilities really are. And we have um, now a set of uh, apps that we play on this uh, much larger Tumblr. We have them of different sizes and they, um, play with different aspects of the technology, but also there are a lot of cultural references. Maybe yeah. I'll pass that over to you then. Sure, go on to yeah. more size, we can see. If it's possible. I'll click on the mouse. Okay. okay. So okay, this so is that's uh, an image of it. Yeah, this is one <laughs> of the uh, the first prototypes. We have several of these now, um, and so you can see the. Uh, 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 tablets at the core, this one just has uh, information data on it. Um, Maybe go through and we'll look at. Greg, I'm clicking. I'm not getting you with this. Oh, you're clicking on this. Uh, so here you can okay. see the Thanks. tablets are interesting because they have not only accelerometer data, obviously, but they also have a compass and they have a, a near field. Uh, and uh, uh, so you can uh, you can see here's some of my uh, uh, my keywords for figuring out how whether the thing's working or not. Um, one thing that's interesting. This tumbler takes the tablet and rotates them completely 360. The tablets are more designed to be handheld, and they're, they're, they don't really like to be turned upside down. They don't want to return really great data when you do that. Uh, so it's this interesting kind of problem of like, oh, it's all there. How do I sort of get that out and make, make use of it? So. so starting from like this micro scale and yeah. then moving outward from that. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> played a lot with uh, tumblers that take pictures so the tumbler would roll when it's still, it would take a picture all directions and sort of be a live camera of that moment and then the stills would, would stay on the, on the screen until it was stopped again. Um, uh, another with uh, animations with these lines. Uh, and there's a picture of it. This was at, uh, we did a residency at iBeam and this was one of the, in the showcase at iBeam, this was an image we used from that. Um, so one thing we really started thinking then about was the literal moving through space with this thing that we roll and thinking about mapping that onto a, uh, a virtual spaces and sort of tying those in together and then creating a bunch of tumblers that sort of had that theme worked in. So uh, uh, the first one we did, we thought about this was with uh, Google Maps. So with this right here, this is, this is my basically my little R2 unit testing so I don't have to roll it on the giant tumbler all the time. And I would roll this around my desk. Uh, this Google map right now. 
I mean, you can see it's drawing a line through where we are. It's, uh, it's starting at Berkeley, and we can roll our way into, into the bay if we keep going. Uh, it's also um, will, leaves this sort of beautiful line drawing. Um, beautiful, I think it's beautiful anyways. Uh, and uh, uh, so we're kind of, it, the other thing that's really nice about this is that it, it it's, uh, turns to your direction. So while when you encounter this tumbler, you're not necessarily thinking about where is north. And as you push this thing through, you realize you want to try and go somewhere. All of a sudden, you have to orient yourself in space in a new way. So it's, uh, it takes, it pulls you out. And when you're just in a room or a gallery, you encounter this thing. Now all of a sudden, you have a new relationship to thinking about where north is. Oh, here's the uh, here's the the demo website, which is slowly becoming my favorite site on the web. We have to do something with this on its own too, because it's just uh, We it's sort just of gorgeous. discovered the, the interest in, in just using the, the web page itself with this, like it has a whole other. Yeah, it's going to be its own you piece You can travel some really point. far and fast and yeah. just doodle all over it. Yep. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause for a successful live demo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we started thinking about, the map is kind of a very literal translation. It's a map, and we have this space, and we sort of scale up this space to that map. And I started, we started thinking about the color space of like an Adobe color picker. And what if the room you're, this thing is rolling through is as if you're rolling through the, uh, rolling through a hue saturation brightness color picker. So you can see here as we roll, we're getting, uh, we're getting, more white, and this way will be more, more black, and uh, this will change the hue as we roll this way. So now, it's <laughs> <laughs> a little thing likes to go off. So now we, we're off the end of the hue spectrum that way. Oh, yeah. um, and so this is mapping a different kind of. Oh, there's beautiful. Uh, I forgot I had that slide. So this is mapping a different kind of space where the Google Map is a sort of a logical space. This is a space that we don't usually. And try and inhabit. It's not a map. It's more of a key or a schematic. And if you've ever done Photoshop, it's very frustrating when you're first starting to understand what's the difference between a hue, saturation, brightness space and an RGB space. And it's always there's all sorts of visual metaphors for trying to describe what that color space is. And so I thought like rolling a tumbler through this space as a way of describing that color space would be an interesting way of sort of exploring color. So. That one, ah, this is uh, then remapping again. Uh, so this graphic is now uh, the uh, uh, a clock. So think of this whole tumbler as time, and uh, my clock is wrong on here. That's why it's not working. Uh, and uh, uh, we have a graphic of the moon, and we have a graphic of the sun. And the, when the tumbler is, is set, the uh, now will be at the top of the, of the clock. So the tumbler becomes an earth. The sun and the moon are rotating around it. And <laughs> live time is on the top of the tumbler, wherever the tablets are set for where their time is. So as you roll it, everything, instead of moving, everything stays in the same place. But over time, the graphics will turn around the tumbler as it, as it turns. Again, mapping a scale of the time and the day, and the time passing, but mapping that scale onto this round physical object that we roll through a space. So each, each iteration of these, we're sort of thinking about how can we sort of rethink a mapping of a system that we have that's a virtual and lives outside of a physical space and to map a that. real space. And map that onto yeah. a real space, yeah. Okay. Oh, last one. So we did all this work. We have hundreds of these. And uh, we ended up with this one that's, uh, that's dead simple. This is the most Sisyphus one. And it's just a number that, that counts. And you get this really nice bell. That you get really nice bells. So it your rolls. Progress. <laughs> so we're thinking about this one as sort of like, um, uh, recording the number of rotations over time from the beginning to an end of an exhibition, for example, 
And, um, yeah. and there'll be two tablets, one on top and one on the bottom. One records going one way, one records going the other. It has all the fun of bubble wrap. Uh, and, uh, or uh, I was thinking it's also like the game you play at the DMV where you just watch the number. <laughs> it's got that kind of like, but it's still entertaining. There's something about that that's still fun, despite it being the most boring thing you could do. So it's the, it's the one that's got the most sort of basic, absolute at its core, it's a, it is a game, uh, albeit horribly boring and not very exciting, it's still a game somehow. And we're interested in, in having the, ex the user experience be that they, that we have multiple tumblers in the same space so that you're constantly shifting your logic in a, in a sort of physical and mental way. You're using the tool very differently, like you would normally use an app for a very particular function and know what you're doing with it, and you just encounter these things and you have to sort of intuit the logic and, and adjust to it. And then, um, and then, uh, uh, so we're really interested in both like the, the magical and fun side and also the, the kind of stupid side of the experience of like being in all of these different systems and trying to map virtual experiences back into real life. <laughs> we're into the um, stupid. <laughs> and uh, and um, let's see, and, and it's a goal of obfuscation um, and the body is included in that obfuscation. Um, and uh, so Let's see, what, what do we have next, Joe? We should show the uh, movies. Okay, so we've yeah. been also doing these multiple channel, um, six channel recordings in different spaces, and this just gives you um, a close up idea of what, what something like this would look like. Um, we have all these different tumblers, and one of them we're using to um, travel around into New York City and do recordings in living spaces and, apart and, and offices. And we ask for, um, you know, we, we put out a call through social media and stuff, and we get uh, a lot of people interested in doing the project, and then they creatively direct a path through their own home. And then we edit these together in a way that they sort of like jump cut through spaces. So it's, it's while it's sort of like pointing to something like Google Street View, there's permission involved, there's a lot of play and flexibility. We're not interested at all in uh, a completeness of the task and we're looking at the impossibility of recording all New York spaces. So we're sort of embracing all of those aspects. It, both, it also defamiliarizes space. Um, as an aspect of the products, uh, project. So um, we're using all of these multiple images to actually um, uh, defamiliarize, which is um, sort of an interesting thing, I think, next to all of the images that, like if you're doing a Google search and everything comes up all together. Um, uh, so I'm gonna just step out of this PowerPoint then and, and play a movie, um, and then we'll take questions. This may or may not work. <laughs> we can just we exit it. One of the ways we're thinking about these, uh, these Tumblr images, we, we, bring the, we bring it to the home, we set it up, we get the tablets all going to the recording, and then Chris and I uh, remove ourselves from the, from the process. So it it's really is people then can control their own uh, path through their, their own environment. Uh, but the cameras are taking God knows what. So it, they're controlling the image, but then there's a lot of like random that also happens. And we show this as a multiple channel piece over different monitors and we also have ideas about showing it throughout an entire environment, so giant and you get kind of immersive experience. Um, this is one example of a recording of a small scale person. And then, uh, and then we thought that we would also show a clip of another recording where um, um, an older person um, chose to do, to do it more as like a conceptual piece. So he chose a song that he would play and kind of walk slowly through this place. Not always the most flattering recording. <laughs> <Lots, laughs> a lot of crotch shots. A lot of crotches. <laughs>
then I can show you like one more minute, which is um, a very different kind of um, response to the um, performance idea. <laughs> And then I guess one image that I'll end on, and because I remembered that we didn't show the image of the uh, installation truck. Oh, yeah. So. So while yeah. Kristen's setting that up, I'll just, I had a note when Greg in, in his uh, announcement of this had asked this sort of question of us, um, are we better citizens of the planet uh, surrounded by imagery? Do we understand our location in new exciting ways or has the image rendered us as strangers in a strange land? Oh. So I'm thinking about answering that question. Um, as an artist, I'm too inside this project to, to be able to say how our art answers these questions, but I would ask this, maybe being strangers in a strange land is exactly what we need right now to be able to appreciate our location. Maybe clarity and understanding is overrated. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> well, um, thank you for this fabulous presentation and demo. Um, I am happy to say that it's now time for a uh, break, but um, we want to give uh, Joe and Kristen and Kristen and Joe a uh, couple minutes for questions, yes? So if you have any questions for Kristen and Joe, please uh, raise your hand. And uh, after this, we'll have a half hour break and we'll come back here for more. Scaling up. Yes, you have a question. Yes. Oh, yes, of, of course. course. But <laughs> Good question. Yes, but we, no, we'd love to do this all over the place, really, but we know we have such a strong network here because we yeah, you yeah. Know, lived here for five years. But we don't have, a, uh, we don't have an exhibition plan for the Bay yeah. Area. So, that's a, so the long We'd love to do a residency in which we could really embed ourselves here. Uh, if you have any uh, ideas, let us know over the coffee break. <laughs> yeah. Over there? Lombard oh, Street. it's like we want to make a really big one, and there's also like these real concerns we have about the weight of them and like their destructive capacity. Because we were like, we'd love to just have people to tell us what to map, you know, like this more kind of collaborative mapping project. You tell us what's important, we'll help you map it, you know, <laughs> or demap it. Yeah. Um, our first impulse was to like take like it outside. It's really heavy. <laughs> our, our first, our first impulse was to take it outside, and we kind of like the constraints also of. These things are big and New York apartments are small. And so people are trying to like roll them across their beds and the cats are scattering and, <laughs> and, and that kind of like ridiculousness of this bit, bit giant physical thing being rolled through a, through a Personal. small apartment. <laughs> um, that kind of adds to some of the fun where yeah. there's, a, there's an immediate like, oh, that's great when it's outside, but it also, I, I like sort of, I almost sort of also appreciate the denial of that. Hi, thanks so much, really interesting work. Um, you're talking about the scale and the size and the references in terms of technology a lot. Um, and I'm wondering if there's any thought to scale in terms of the body and the body, body politic in terms of access or just basic things like the sort of perspective you would get based on the size of your body or where you're able to go. I mean, part, partly to that, the, the bringing in people's houses and that, that definitely real. And it, this is a poor example for that because this is so small. They are really, they do have a, a real physical, they're fun to roll. Yeah, and they have a, 
they, they're inviting as an object to want, you want to roll them around. Um, and in some ways, people, when, we're, when we exhibit it, people like want to do it but still need permission, and partly because you're not supposed to roll artwork, but also it has these tablets and it looks a little more fragile than it really is. So, so there is a, but they definitely, they have a, a, a roll me feel to them, and that is definitely about, about the body. Um, the, in the videos we showed, we noticed that the little kid, uh, his face is like right up in front of it, and that's because the camera's coming up right at his height, so he had a different kind of relationship to it than a lot of the adults do. I think like in a lot of my own work and, and working collaboratively, it's a whole new world. Like we have such a huge uh, project ahead of us, but some things are taking their time to get more specific um, that are really important to us in our independent practices. And in my own work, I, I deal a lot on the personal level, like positing the personal within institutional frameworks. So working with something like um, a, a mapping project that invites personal expression and interior spaces connected to you know, this larger framework uh, that is also um, very authoritarian or has like this like very practical side to it where we're kind of interested in what else can be possible with mapping if you start at the personal level. So we are definitely moving ourselves into that sphere of questioning as well. Thank One you, it's a great question. Yep. I, re I really liked those videos. I liked how incredibly disjointed they were uh, and yet perfectly logical. I had two questions. One was, um, do you build any shock absorption into the tumblers? Um, and you were also talking about like the potential for them to crush things. Like, you know, do you put safety rubber? We put rubber bumper on it. No. <laughs> so far, you know, we've thought of all different kinds of materials that we might remake them out of, and and also the convenience of like sending an image to a city and having it cut for us, and and like assembling like that now exists another type of you know, image location capability. But um, we, we like the weight and we like the, the feel that you have of physically pushing. So that's why we're still sort of interested in the, the plywood kind of tumbler. We don't have kids, so we don't worry about crushing yeah, problems. It doesn't <laughs> even. <laughs> yeah. um, to, your, to your note about the, the, it's disjointed but sort of compelling, there's something that happens, especially when they're lined up, where you can watch it you can watch it sort of all happen over time, but you can see something coming and then watch, trace it as it rolls through. And so you, you have this kind of video where usually the video happens and you're stuck in one time moment. And here you can kind of, you, you've got a little buffer of traveling back and forth through time as you're watching it because you can kind of see it's sort of time and space, you can sort of go back in space if you want to. It's a, it, it is a different kind of viewing experience, but you have to sort of train yourself to to see it happen. And you, and you have like an image of what you're recording, which Joe probably mentioned, and it's totally not what you recorded, you know? So there's like this whole image you have of what this is gonna be yeah. that is completely the opposite of what you get, you know? Okay, thank you. I think but you've achieved- But I had a follow-up question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you're keeping so everyone I was really copy. So okay, fine. <laughs> okay, good, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, well, um, so the thing that did the colors is really intriguing to me. Is it, re is it reacting to the colors in the room? No, it's mm -hmm. just a it's just a, a color feel as if this room were uh, like a scale USB of color colors. picker. Yeah, yeah, so it's looking at the numerical value or the hexadecimal value of like a set of numbers and mapping that to like the the direction you're going in and mapping it to no it knows like what a full rotation is so it can we can figure out distance. There's a it. W if I was installing this as an artwork, there's a mode on here where you go, okay, roll to one end of the room, roll to one to the other end, roll to one side, and roll to the other, and then it knows the what its boundaries are, and then it just rolls yeah. through the color picker through that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, one more quick question. Oh my God. Yeah? <laughs> no, you already had one. <laughs> you have another one? Oh, there, over okay, there. Got yes, Mary Beth, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I love that idea. Uh, no, that's <laughs> completely nauseating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, there was something else that reminded me of it. I can't remember what it was. Though. Yes. Awesome. We'll <laughs> sign you up. Oh yeah, we we want to do things like navigate through your email. You know, like 
rustling and clicking and turning. And <laughs> we need to navigate. We need to roll through the Google search for Sisyphus. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> that's obvious. It's all coming together. Yeah. I think you created a threshold exactly like Emmanuel Aloha was describing in our earlier talk, a, a threshold at which this, the crisis of image and location constantly unfolds and erupts, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful threshold. So thank you very much. We have two announcements quickly. One is there is coffee outside and there's break. Um, we're looking forward to that. We're also on time, which is amazing. So thank you so much. And uh, the third thing is we have books for sale because many of the people who are speaking today wrote some fabulous books about the subjects they're speaking about. And there's actually a beautiful book table out there where you can get a material copy of the book. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Kristen and Jill. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, guys. This way, Jill. Oh.